on everybody this is more power here welcome back to the channel hopefully you guys are having a powerful day today what we're going to be doing is i'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks on how to get better at call of duty world war ii now i'm going to be breaking these down into phases so that it's um easier to to understand you have a little bit more of a practical and tactical way of getting better at call of duty so first off we're going to be looking at phase number one, which is the Headquarters mode. Now, Headquarters is a new mode that we were introduced by Sledgehammer Games into Call of Duty uh, because they wanted something a little bit more interactive, a little bit more social. But it goes beyond that. There's actually a tactical way, and there's three things in this thing that can help you get better at Call of Duty World War II. Now, number one is the firing range. Now, we're going to come over here to the firing range. And we're gonna use our MP40, and we're gonna. This is, will help you get better at judging the distances that you'll be able to use your weapon at. This gun is really good up close and really good at medium ranges. Now I have uh, advanced rifling on this, uh, which we'll get into a little bit later, so that I'm able to shoot, um, have better damage at longer ranges. So I from practically mid ranges but at longer ranges the next thing in the headquarters that we're gonna go take a look at we're not gonna be able to actually show you in game uh, because the headquarters is um they're working on it with getting servers and everything back up to fill it back out is the 1v1 pit if you want to come in and just test with one person some different guns and different how to like tactically move around a map then this is what you'll want to do. So you've got little, um, you've got coverages, you've got long lanes of sight, you've got um, you all different kind of things to show you how to maneuver around a map. I wish I could show you in game, but like I said, it's not actually uh, letting us due to the fact that Sledgehammer is working on fixing it. But the next thing we're going to look at is the score streak testing range. Now this is something that is brand new to Call of Duty along with um, everything else in this headquarters. We had a firing range at Modern Warfare Remastered, but we never had a score streak tester to where you can go in and actually physically test out your score streaks. Okay, so now that we're in, we're going to pick a score streak to use, and we're going to test out the Glide Bomber. One of the quickest ones you can get to test out, and I just got four kills with the glide bomb now we're gonna hit option we're gonna go pick another we're gonna pick one of the higher we're gonna do the fire bomb run now this is one that is automatic and uh, you don't have to manually use it and we're just getting kills getting kills so now we're gonna use the ball turret this is the highest See, I'm even still getting kills with the the other kill streak, but this is the highest streak you can get, and you can just go and just test it, see, so that when you're in game, you actually can get kills. Okay, guys, so this is going to be phase number two of our tips and tricks video on how to get better at Call of Duty and or World War II, and this is actually probably going to be one of the most vital phases out of the three that we're gonna do today so and that is setting up a class that will set you up for success now right here I have the PPSH I love the PPSH um, it is a great gun that you practically start out with you get it right a really really early on um, level in the game and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go down here to Prime because this is going to lead into something else. Prime does, uh, the basic training is perk system now in Call of Duty World War II. And this is actually, I believe, the best perk, in, or the best basic training in the game. Now, when you equip Prime, you do have to, to wait uh, a good little while before you can get this. You don't unlock it to level 32. But it adds an additional primary attachment. So you can run three attachments on your guns instead of two, which will help out in the long run. And then also, 
help you flinch less when you get shot. Or when you're in a gunfight and you're getting shot and you're still shooting at somebody, your gun's not kicking up, so you're actually able to stay on target and keep shooting. So that is actually the best perk for me to help you get better at Call of Duty. Now the gun, the gun is always going to be paramount in getting better. Use a gun that you can use. Now the PPSH is a great gun. It has moderate recoil, a good fire rate, and moderate damage. Now I'm also going to make this even better by adding a reflex sight to it so that I can see longer ranges and see enemies clearer at distance. Now I'm also going to put a grip on it to manage that moderate recoil so that you're able to keep your aim on the body of the enemy when you're shooting them. And then also we're going to be uh, using steady aim which actually I want to use advanced rifling to give it a little bit better damage at longer ranges. Okay guys, so we're back and we're with phase three now and that is actually showing you in game. The first thing in in game is to always pre-aim your openings. You always want to pre-aim so that when you're coming up to an opening, you have your gun drawn already so that if an enemy runs out of a, a door, you're able to shoot at him and him not be aware that you're all, or you're gonna already up. See right there? The guy was trying to hop out a window. Oh shoot. So we're gonna drop down and pre-aim this door. I don't think he's seen me. Now I was in their spawn. That's something you don't want to do is just uh, hang around in their spawn. Especially if you're by yourself because you're you're gonna die. You're gonna die. It's gonna happen. Now Sometimes being aggressive is a good thing, but you don't always want to try to be aggressive. Another good thing to know is the map that you're playing on so you know which gun to use. You don't want to use a submachine gun on a huge map like Gustav's Cannon. There are good places to use submachine guns on that map, but you don't want to run around with a submachine gun on Gustav's Cannon. Now, see, pre-aiming just got me a double kill. And another thing you'll want to do is know your bullets. Like, I only had two bullets there. Now, see, that was just an unfortunate situation where I was trying to help out a teammate and got killed. Another good thing is you know where some of these rush routes are. So I would throw a grenade into the rush routes just to kind of clear things out, give you a little bit of an ability to run up and get into these uh, lanes and be able to get some kills. Now there, I seen two enemies and I attacked the one that was the least, had the least ability to kill me. It's picking and choosing. This guy dipped. So you're not, you don't want to chase after guys. Unless they're weak, really, really, really weak. Otherwise, don't chase them. And see, we're already six and three. We got a pretty good KD going on right now. Ooh, ooh, okay. So. I wasn't aware of my surroundings. That's why I got killed there. Another good thing you'll want to do is use the mini map to your advantage. Like, see, I knew that guy was right there because of the mini map. And I know that there's another guy up here on the staircase. And I got shot from behind because I was chasing after a guy. Your spawn is almost never a safe spot mid-game. You'll never know when an enemy is coming. I know that that's the rush route, so I'm going to chuck a grenade. And that gives me the ability to get a kill. Even though I didn't get a kill, it gave me the opportunity to get a kill. You always want to give yourself... The most opportunities to get kills. 
and always, see that's where Prime came in handy, because I was able to not flinch in that gunfight. Just and just because you preem doesn't mean you're gonna be you're gonna guarantee yourself to win every gunfight. There's also the fact that people are gonna have different uh, or higher powered uh, guns than you. Like it, you don't want to challenge somebody at distance if they have an assault rifle and you have. A submachine gun or you don't want to challenge somebody with a submachine gun at close range or with an assault rifle at close range if they have an SMG it's just always being aware of what's around you but that's gonna do it for this video if you enjoyed leave a like let me know what you think um, let me know if these tips helped you Ooh, and if so check out some of my other videos and if you're new to the channel hit the subscribe button guys and as always see y'all in the next video